In this video segment for the Dutch Cottage Design Project, we're going to take a look at segment number seven for the terrain and decks. We're going to go through and create a slope terrain and then a wraparound deck. Let's go into the program and review the steps to create these. Now the first thing I'm going to do in my plan view is I'm going to change my toolbar configuration to the terrain configuration. That way it's going to give me access to the different terrain tools. To begin with, when you create your terrain, you want to create it on a specific floor. So if you're going to be adding landscaping features, plant beds, driveways, walks, they all need to be on the same floor. In this case, I'm on floor one. I could easily have created it on floor zero. It doesn't really matter. It just matters that you're going to use that same floor to do all of your work on. I usually create it on the floor that makes the most sense. I expect I drew my terrain on floor one. It will match my garage, so I'll just do it that way on floor one. Once I create my terrain perimeter, you can see it show up in 3D. And I'm just going to come in here and create some sizing for the terrain. And using my temporary dimension, I'm going to set it to be 120 feet in length. And then I'm going to set it in width to be at 80 feet in width. So I'm just making up an arbitrary terrain here. And I'll just kind of position it approximately on the house using the move handle here. And now you can see just a simple flat terrain in the 3D view. Now if you want to slope the terrain, let's go ahead and pull that over just a little bit more. If you want to slope the terrain, you can use a tool called the Elevation Line Tool. And that's the easiest way to slope your terrain. And you really need two of these lines. So I'll just draw one in the front. It needs to be inside of the terrain. When you draw one of these lines, it's going to be at zero, which is a relative to your terrain. And I'll draw another one in the back here. So both of these lines are at zero. It makes no change to the terrain until you open up the line and you actually change the elevation of it. So let's go ahead and set that to be minus eight feet. And when we do that, the train's going to actually cantilever up and go through part of the garage. And we'll make that adjustment as we need to. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a terrain elevation region and I'm going to create a flat region that's in the front of this portion of the house. To create that flat area in front of the house, I'm going to use one of the tools called the elevation region. And I'm just going to come in on the front of the house, draw a marquee. Notice that I'm going outside of the terrain perimeter. When I do that, let's go ahead and open up that elevation and let's set it to be exactly at zero. And that will create a flat region for us. Let's take that same terrain elevation region, let's create a copy of it, and we'll just slide it towards the back of the house. And let's pull that up so that it's not quite as long. And I'm going to set that elevation region to only minus 30 inches. So that's going to create a slight slope. Let's go ahead and broaden our 3D view and you can take a look at what the slope looks like here. We're going to have to do some work on this wall because our terrain is going to expose that crawl space. And the other thing I want to do is I want to pull the terrain up so that it's closer to the garage. So let's just select the terrain here, open it up. And one of the settings here is the automatic terrain elevation. And right now that is at 11, almost 11 and a half. I'm just going to change that. Let's put in seven inches. It's the subfloor height above the terrain. So seven inches, we've hung our floor with our framing. Let's see if that number works. And that way you can make your adjustments into your terrain. And that looks pretty good. To create the driveway and sidewalk, you'll find tools for those up here in the menu. And oftentimes I will actually just use a terrain feature. Let's go ahead and go into the floor plan view, split our screen. And using it just a terrain feature, I have a little more flexibility over it. I'm just going to come out here and again, I'm just going to overlap the outside of the terrain and come in for the porch area and create the same thing and maybe raise the elevation up and make modifications to it that way. And again, part of the reason that I do this is just because I have more editing capabilities with these, a little bit more flexibility than using the driveway and the sidewalk tools and again it's just kind of a preference you can use either one of them and create your own design now i'm going to go ahead and delete those objects i've placed the all of the terrain components 
into my library. I've simply selected these items. Once you've selected them, you can block them. There's a block command down here in your toolbar. Once you block them, then there is a tool that you can add to library, and you can simply add those into your library. And if I delete those and open up the library, I've already added a completed terrain element in there that already has all those to the right sizes. Let's open up the library. And I'm just going to simply come over here and place that. I may have to place it off to the side because it's quite large. And then we'll just kind of position that into place. Again, it has my stepping stones and all of those components that I need. Once you've got it positioned, you can go back into your 3D view and see what it looks like. So with the exception of the plants, all of those objects are simply just using this terrain tool that I created and to set the elevation. You'll notice that in the front porch area it's raised slightly and then my stepping stones that are off to the side over here are just using those same things. They'll follow the terrain and that way it will match in nicely. Now I'm going to add my deck on the back and have it wrap around to the front and meet this area and then next we'll go in and take a wall elevation and uh, pull this wall down since you can actually see the footing and that's going to be a problem for creating the depth on that for frost. Now to create the wraparound deck I'm going to use the deck railing tool you'll find in the menu called straight deck railing and I'm going to come off the corner of the house out to the edge of that patio and then we'll just come around and wrap that around the back of the house. Let's come out and zoom out a little bit. Pull that back a little bit further. And I'm just going to come out to the corner where we get our extension snap. Pull that down. So we get close. I'm going to leave space here because I want the stairs to go around the side. And we'll just pull that out to about where the stepping pad is and until that extension comes in there and then to the edge of the corner. We'll zoom in and pull that back. And if you want to add your dimensions you can do that. You can also use your temporary dimensions if you want to set those to be exact. Let's go ahead and set that to maybe be five feet in both directions here. And we'll set that to be five feet. Now that we have the deck you can go around. You can actually double click on this room. Decks have a deck panel and you can control information about the planking, the border, and also your framing details. Let's take a look at 3D what we have here. You'll notice that the framing automatically came in on the deck and it met the terrain. You can modify that. That's automatic deck framing. Let's make a few changes on this deck. First of all, let's take this railing here. I'm just going to simply highlight it, open up that wall and I'm going to mark that to be invisible so it just gives it room definition and then we'll open up the display of that. And for the actual railing style I'm going to group select those walls in 2D and I'm going to change it to a cable style. So let's go back into the floor plan view and we'll just select these walls. I'm just going to hold the shift key down here grab those handful of walls and we'll go ahead and open those up and the way you change this to a railing is there's a rail style here in the dialog and you'll select that to be panels and then to choose the panel style move down to the newels and balusters and on the panels let's go into the library and we can browse in and find those different styles that we have available. Typically the fence works there's also uh, should be some bonus libraries for these but let's grab a cable style here And once we have that style, you can see the preview of it. If you want to set the panel thickness, you can do that. Let's go ahead and maybe uh, bump that up slightly. And there's other details about that rail style. If you want to set the height of it, how far it is to the bottom, and that sort of information. Back in the 3D view, you can see the change. Now on this side of the deck, let's go ahead and place our stairs. And then we can step our foundation. So let's go ahead and split our screen, Shift F6 on the keyboard. We'll zoom in here, use our stair tool, and simply click the stairs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hold the Alt key down. That's going to force the stairs to go in the downward direction, place the stairs in that area. And let's go ahead and bump those against the house. And maybe we'll just pull those out a little bit here. 
Let's make some adjustments in here. Also, it automatically puts in a doorway. If you want to make that adjustment, let's go ahead and just tab on to that doorway. And we'll just zoom in and pull that doorway out. And we'll just make the stairs exactly the same as well. Just pull those all the way out. And again, maybe I'll move those away from the house here just a little bit. I'm going to completely remove the railings off of the stairs. So let's go in. And we'll just remove it off the left and right side. And then that way you can remove that rail completely off the stairs. If you don't want the stringer on there, we could make that change and maybe make the stairs close as well. Let's go ahead and make those changes real quick. So we'll remove the stringer at the wall. And then we'll just remove open underneath and open risers as well. And then we can use a material painter and simply come in here pick up the color off of the concrete and then you can match that as well for the stair tread. Let's go ahead and use our material eyedropper and we'll just match that on the stair tread. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to step this wall down. It's more difficult to see actually with our stairs in place. I want to step that wall down so that it goes below the frost line and I'm going to take an elevation view to make that change to the wall. Now the process to step that wall, let's take an elevation view of the wall to begin with. And then let's slide that view over to the other side of our monitor. And when I turn the terrain perimeter on, you can see that line cutting down through the element. And what I want to do is I want to first of all pull that wall down and I also want the brick to come down a little bit further. To do that, let's go to our foundation level. And I'm going to select this wall. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see what I have. I'm going to select that wall. And I'm actually going to make it a pony wall on the wall types. And for the pony wall, let's take the upper wall type and let's make it brick six. And that will match the upper portion of it. You can also display what you want in plan view. Let's display the lower wall in plan view because I want to see that foundation. It's more of a visual thing in that view. And now you can see that in the 3D view or in the elevation view that we have that elevation and that brick has come down. Let's maximize this view. Now when you click on the wall you may actually get the room. If you click on it in the lower left hand corner it says exterior room if you see that. I'll move my mouse down in that area. It says exterior room. Press the tab key and you're going to get the wall. Once you get the wall I'm going to use the break tool and I'm going to come in here with the number three on the keyboard and I'm just going to create a break in this area right here. Now once that's done I'm going to pull it down so that I get 30 inches or 24 inches below the terrain which is represented by this line so that I can make sure that I'm below that frost line. Once I have that break in place let's go ahead and come up to this section of the pony wall. Again you have to press the tab key. And I'm going to press a break and I'm going to come past the terrain line over here and press number three on the keyboard. And I'm going to put a break in that area right here. And then we can pull that down to the desired location. Maybe hold the control key down. And then as you zoom in a little bit, let's go ahead and maybe pull this up so that it's sloping if you want to. And I may also pull this line up so that it's in line with the uh, with the terrain up above. And let's just go ahead and pull this over. And we'll get maybe a somewhat of a smooth line on that. So you can kind of make those changes. I've got that change on this wall. Let's close that view, go back into the floor plan view, and take a section through the back because we want to match our foundation on the back. You can see here is the stem wall and footing we have on this press the tab key and I'm just going to simply come down and snap that into location and now that is safely below the frost line that we need. It's back into the 3D view you can see around it's going below the foundation or the terrain slide our view up so that we go below the terrain and you can see what we've done to step that foundation. Now well, the final topic on the deck, if you change your camera view set, let's just change it to our 3D framing set. You can see that our framing for the deck is actually automatic and it's changed it. If you want to change your deck, let's change our camera. 
back to the camera view set so that we can view this. And we'll select the deck room. You can make other changes to the deck. If you highlight the deck, open it up. One of the things you may want to do is you may want to have border planks. And let's say we want two border planks, maybe not against the walls, and make the changes on there, the plank width, the gap. Let's go ahead and make the changes on there. And if you zoom in, you can see that there's our border plank on that deck. And if you want to make changes to the framing, let's go back to our floor plan view and turn on our framing view. And you can see the framing in the 2D view. It did some interesting things in this area. You can manually modify it. That will force the program to turn off the automatic framing. And then you can make manual modifications that it did. I'm not sure if I turned off the border planks quite correctly against the wall, but it created an interesting framing against the wall in here. You can also change your joist direction. So if you want those joists going long ways in this direction, you can easily use a joist direction line. Let's come up here and find a joist direction line. And we'll just drag that in. I'll turn the automatic framing back on, and then that will change the framing for that. And that looks a little bit cleaner. And again, you can manually go in and clean that up against uh, maybe this edge of the wall. Well, that completes this section of the video for the terrain. We created a slope terrain, added our driveway, and also our wraparound deck that came around the back. We took a look at adjusting our wall so that it went down below the frost line. And that pretty much wraps up this section of the terrain and deck.